It's recording. Good morning, ninth grade. Good morning, ninth grade. <laughs> uh. Hello. Hello. Welcome to YouTube. Welcome to the YouTube channel. So, uh, good morning, everybody. I hope you uh, had no problems with yesterday's assignment, and I hope you have already gone into Google Classroom and opened up the slides for today because we're going to go through them with you now. Okay. So we have uh, alliteration and onomatopoeia today. And so our focus objective is I can read a poem and identify two poetic devices. One of them is alliteration. The second one is onomatopoeia. We're going to go over both of those today and then we'll give you a poem that is reflective of those two poetic devices and we'll ask you to just work with those devices and the poem. Uh, feel free if you have the time and a place to be quiet to pause the video and take three deep cleansing breaths. Okay, moving on. All right. So alliteration definition is the repetition of a beginning sound for, a t or for effect. These may be vowel, A-E-I-O-U, or consonant sounds. The alliterative sounds have been underlined in the following examples. So the alligator ate apples and avocados. The repetition of A, the letter A, the vowel A, is the example of alliteration. Walking in a winter wonderland, www, walking winter wonderland. Those are examples of alliteration. Uh, there's three more examples for you on the bottom as well. The warm wind, oops, and I forgot one, waft it across the window. Repetition of the letter W, that W sound. I accidentally ate an awful apple repetition of that vowel A sound. And number three, slipping and sliding, I stumbled in the snow and the slush. Repetition of that S sound. So uh, here are four sentence starters that we're gonna ask you to use to finish these phrases with an original alliteration. If you're with us for the live session, we'll do this as a class. And if you're just joining us independently on your own time, um, try to come up with your own. W Mr. Allen and I will, will actually try it right now. So feel We're going to each do number one. We're both going to do it? We're both going to do number one. Because otherwise, then they don't, have, they don't get to have fun with two, three, and four. Okay. So we're gonna each do number one. You want to go first or second? Um, I'll go second. Swiftly swimming, the silent serpent sank. Ooh. Okay. Um, mine would be, hold on. Swiftly swimming, uh, swimmers, swam in shallow seas. Okay. Okay. Either, either is acceptable. You have that repetition of S here, here, here. Okay. And you could just try the same thing for two, three, and four. Onomatopoeia is a fun word to say, but it's the imitation of natural sounds in written language. For example, the steam hissed from the open valve. Hiss is the sound that it makes when something hisses. Onomatopoeia is a poetic device that produces an auditory image to the reader. Again, yeah, all that means is that you can see a word that sounds like the sound it's describing. So here's some onomatopoeia. The train rumbled down the track. So rumble, Sounds like something that rumbles, but then it goes even more. 
chugga 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 choo choo. Those are words that sound like that sound. The truck's brakes screeched in the distance. And if you wanted to, you could even write in, however you would spell that, and that's onomatopoeia. The old floor creaked as we walked across the room. And so if you were reading maybe Goosebumps. Yeah, Goosebumps, I was gonna say, or Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, if you were reading um, a horror story um, or Goosebumps, then maybe R.L. Stein would have an example of onomatopoeia, including creaks, because creak, creak, does sound like a door creaking, but how could you write that out in your own letters? That's also onomatopoeia. So Mr. Allen and I, like we just modeled for alliteration, we will model one of these for you now. Want to do, let's do number two this time. Uh, The branches of the tree cracked under the wind. Okay. The branches of the trees swished in the breeze. Ooh, Very kind of, nice. That kind of rhymes. It kind of does. <laughs> Call me a poet, why don't you? So here you can practice your onomatopoetics. Uh, the rusty gate. What sound would a rusty gate make? How can you write that out in a word or just in a sound effect? The branches of the tree. What did they do? What sound did they make? Or the motorcycle. There's a number of words that sound like what motorcycles sound like. Can you find one or are you going to make one up? Okay, today's poem is called Honky Tonk in Cleveland, Ohio by Carl Sandburg. Fun fact about Carl Sandburg, he was uh, a porter at a Union Hotel barber shop when he was 14 until the age of 18. That's when barbershops were open. Not, Great fact. Not, not in these days and ages. Okay. Honky Tonk in Cleveland, Ohio by Carl Sandburg. It's a jazz affair. Drum crashes and cornet razzes. The trombone pony neighs and the tuba jackass snorts. The banjo tickles and titters too awful. The chippies talk about the funnies in the papers. The cartoonists weep in their beer. Ship riveters talk with their feet to the feet of floozies under the tables. A quartet of white hopes mourn with interspersed snickers. I got the blues, I got the blues, I got the blues. And as we said earlier, the cartoonists weep in their beer. Keeping yesterday's four tips in mind, Here are your four questions for today. They are located in the Google Classroom document, same as yesterday. Question number one, there are no animals in this bar. What might the poet mean in the second line, the trombone pony neighs and the tuba jackass snorts? Also a note, this is a poem written years ago. So that word jackass is referring to an animal. There's an animal that's referred to as an ass or a jackass. Uh, Question number two, find an example of alliteration in the poem and write the lines. In your worksheet, there's space for you to write those lines in. And if you forget what alliteration is, question number three, scroll back up through the slides and find the examples. Yeah, if you didn't take a, any notes, that's okay. Just scroll back up, find the slide about alliteration. Question number three, find an example of onomatopoeia in the poem. In your worksheet, there's room for you to write that line in. For an example of a word that sounds like the sound it's describing. Consider the title and the setting of this poem. Why is onomatopoeia a good poetic device to use in this poem? And you could consider, when you consider the setting of this poem and why onomatopoeia would be good for this, think about a poem about a quiet forest. Mm. Would you use onomatopoeia when you are writing about a quiet forest? 
Maybe not. Probably not. Okay, so those are the four questions for today. Um, you have them here, you have your slides, and you have your worksheet titled Tuesday 421 Worksheet with those four questions in it. Answer those four questions, hit submit, and you're done for the day. If you have any questions, guys, email us, feel free. We're here for you. Um, I'm, and I'm here at the 1.30 uh, Google Meet session, the link for which I normally post at around 1.20 every day. But it's the same link every day, so if you have the code from last time, you can use it. Bye, guys. Bye.